You're now watching Sports Better's Paradise on the Bet Rivers Network. All right, Jimmy, I'm talking college baseball again. We're down to eight now for the College World Series. And for the first time since they've gone to an eight team College World Series, it is just two participating regionals. Not a complete surprise. And I don't think this is going to happen a ton in the future, but a little bit of foreshadowing here because, well, the two power conferences geographically positioned to uh, to have success in college baseball, the SEC and the ACC. Well, that's where you go. And then you take Tennessee and Oklahoma and put them in the SEC as well. So Oregon State, the class of the Pac-12, wasn't always like that. Back in the uh, the Rod Dato in the uh, in the Jim Brock days, back at USC and Arizona State, but uh, the folks from Corvallis, uh, they have clearly become. Uh, the best program out there, They're kind of a you know program without a conference right now. So we'll have to see how that affects that team. One long ago, too, that another participant in this past weekend's uh, Super Regional didn't even have a program, the Oregon Ducks. But once they saw Oregon State having success, so we want a little piece of that as well. So, uh, but so there we go. We got four and four from the SEC uh, in the ACC. Very good week for us last week uh, in the uh, Super Regional round. Uh, get to the worst part first. We lost at Kansas State against Virginia, the two dogs, K-State versus Virginia, and then West Virginia against North Carolina. North Carolina, I mean, it, it, this is the deal with them. West Virginia has a three-run lead in the ninth inning. A three-run lead in the ninth inning. This is right after North Carolina was two outs away from being eliminated by LSU. LSU was not a good team this year by their standards. And so North Carolina, still the ACC, it's got half the field here. They won, the, they won the regular season by two games. So are they, are they a team at plus 800 to win it all that have the, the close calls behind them? Or are they a team that's been very lucky and it's just a matter of time? You've got a, a lot of comparisons with it in March Madness where a team that may have had that scare, very lucky to get past it, but then got things straight. So North Carolina is an interesting team. At uh, plus 800. We won our three-team uh, Moneyline Parlay, or sorry, our Super Regional our Series Parlay, and all teams won in a sweep in two games. We went a collective 6-0. and uh, Kentucky, 10 to nothing in the first win, and a one-run game in the second win. Florida State, same thing. 20-run win in the first win, and then why do you pitch to Tibbs? He's four for five with uh, two home runs. They pitch to him, and they're going home. So, UConn, I don't know why they pitched to him. That guy is on fire for Florida State. Remember, we gave you that future at uh, before the when the 64 team field was announced at 20 to 1. Florida State, after advancing past the regional in the super without a loss, down to 9 to 1. Great matchup in the first in the first game on Saturday. That's the primetime game on Saturday night with Tennessee and Florida State. And then AM. AM, who's got a complete team, a great lineup, great pitching, and more importantly, a coach that's been there with multiple teams. And he's got a great success. Jim Schlossnagel, Tulane, since he was the top assistant there. Has not been the same. They were one of the one of the better programs in the country uh, when he was there. UNLV got them to the uh, to the NCAA tournament. Got TCU uh, to uh, to uh, the College World Series, and now he has the Aggies. But a major blow on Sunday night with Braden Montgomery, uh, their star hitter, broken ankle. He is out for the year. He's going to be. He's probably going to be a top five pick in the MLB draft uh, just around the corner. And that's one where they 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 handled it fine, uh, you know. When he, you know finish it off, uh, the comeback against Oregon on Sunday night, but to go through this whole tournament, I think that's something that's just just too big of a thing because they are positioned well. Second shortest shot, shot I don't think the odds makers have adjusted at plus two seventy five without him. It's just one of those things where they haven't adjusted at all. A&M with Braden Montgomery would have been a real, real challenge. They're still going to be a factor, but I think that's going to be the difference for them maybe having a real shot uh, at winning it all. And then you look at uh, and you look at Tennessee. In Tennessee, we gave out their future before the Super Regional round, and Tennessee was at 3-1, uh, to one. Eh, plus 250 after they take care of Evansville. Lost the Saturday game, although they almost came back and won uh, down uh, down eight runs uh, in the uh, in the ninth inning. But anyway, Tennessee at plus two fifty. This is a team and a program and a coach that is poised for to to win it all. 
Um, at plus 250 at this point, I hope that you got on plus three dollars. Even that little bit of difference, that's tough to uh, that's tough to uh, advise at, especially with I think is going to be a very very con- a real tight matchup in Game One against Florida State. Link Jarrett, we talked about them last time. Tennessee, their best team ever. Best uh, best regular season to ever come through the Southeastern Conference. Tennessee, two years ago, Link Jarrett brought his Notre Dame Fighting Hours team into Knoxville and beat them two out of three. Now Tennessee has another good team, and it's amazing that they're this good and the number one overall seed in this tournament without Chase Burns, who's going to be a top 10 pick uh, in the draft as well. You lose that type of pitching. The other thing to uh, keep in mind when you're looking at and we, we did hit the two dogs. I'm sorry, the Super Regional. Kind of bouncing around here. The two dogs, NC State and Florida, <clears throat> both win in uh, in deciding game threes. Uh, Florida, lucky to be in the tournament. They shouldn't be in the tournament. Uh, the, the players for their team and their coach said as much. I mean, one game over 500. But, and they were almost ineligible because had they not won two out of three in Athens, they would have had a losing record and would have been ineligible for an at-large bid for the field of 64. But they've gone on the road twice to Stillwater and now to uh, and now taking care of business uh, in uh, on the road a couple of times. And they cash both at plus money. I thought Georgia should not have gotten uh, a national seed and NC State at a 10 seed. Very good. And keep in mind what NC State happened to them in the COVID year. They beat the top pitcher in college baseball in lighter from Vanderbilt. I mean, like a plus 230 dog. Beat them, uh, beat them there, advanced uh, into the winner's bracket, and then they had some uh, negative tests. They, uh, they made them play with only 13 players. Then that night at about 1 in the morning, they, uh, they eliminate them from the tournament completely. And uh, just a, a horrendous way. Keep in mind, this is the same athletic program that went to a bowl game, went coast-to-coast coast from Raleigh-Durham all the way to uh, Southern California to play UCLA. And they got uh, they were got denied of playing their bowl game as well. Karma, a little payback, a little mojo. I don't know. This is a coach who's on the doorstep of retirement. He's got the right temperament to handle the big stage uh, in Omaha. Thing about Omaha is when you watch a lot of these, uh, you watch the game on Monday night in uh, in Athens. I mean, the kid hit one over the uh, you know the batter's eye. I mean, <laughs> I mean that. They're hitting them in the top of the trees. A lot of these parks are so hitting friendly. A lot of them in the ACC and the SEC. That is not the case at Charles Schwab Field uh, in Omaha. About uh, 10 to 12 years ago, they moved it from a bluff where the wind was usually blowing out and the ball carried a lot more to move to downtown. And they've got all the amenities of downtown, the hotels, the entertainment districts, baseball village, the whole thing. It makes it for an experience instead of just going to the ballpark in a neighborhood off the interstate. But they are, it's just so pitching friendly. And so can Tennessee, who hit seven home runs, can they just swing for the fences? Uh, and they're trying to break uh, LSU's 1998 record, uh, 1997 record of most home runs in a single season. They're going to have to adjust. Uh, and a team that maybe is kind of already adjusted and will play a little small ball from the SEC, and that is Kentucky. What, what's, what bothers me about Kentucky is that, you know, first-timers, debutantes, maidens, they usually don't do very well uh, in Omaha. they got to get some of those battle scars first. So if you haven't gotten already on our Florida State at uh, plus 2,000 ticket going into the tournament, it's not, it's my, maybe it's not too late even to get at them. You get to them at uh, plus 900. So I think this is a coin flip game. Uh, the lines, uh, we're still waiting on the individual game lines, but I this is a 50-50 game. I know that Florida State is going to be plus money against Tennessee. Tennessee's been uh, big time chalk the whole time. And for some reason, Florida State just a little bit slighted uh, in this whole thing. Keep in mind, Tennessee and Kentucky were co-champions in the regular season in the SEC. And North Carolina won the league uh, by two games. Florida State is real hot, and they got some guys that can really play. And I love the coach. And he has been here before with another team. Man, Schlossnagel, that's just too short of a price with the with the Aggies. He's, I think, 
at some point he's going to get one. I mean, this is an athletic department is trying to push all in with their resources, their finances. I mean, it's a battle of resources now that Texas with their Lamborghini Row with their uh, football recruiting trip uh, just recently. So, but man, you lose a guy like Braden Montgomery. I think that's just too big of a loss. So, man, if you got Tennessee at plus 300, which we gave out entering the Super Regional, hold on to that ticket. If you got Florida State at plus 2,000, uh, going into the field of 64, hold on to that ticket. If you're late to the party at this price, maybe a little bit on North Carolina plus 800 and a little bit at Florida State plus 900. Those right now. Kentucky at 550, being a maiden too short. A&M without their best player plus 275. And Tennessee under $3 now, a little too short as well. So maybe North Carolina and Florida State. We'll get to some of the individual games later in the week. I'm Jimmy Ott here in the Sports Better's Paradise on the Bat Rivers Network.